welcome back. Today we're going to look at literal equations. Literal equations are just equations that are going to be mostly letters. So instead of 2x plus 4 equals 8, you'll get something like ax plus b equals c. And then you're still going to solve for x the same. Sometimes we'll solve for other letters, but the question will tell you which one to solve for. We saw these before in chapter 1. This lesson is just going to expand your knowledge on that and review you so that you remember exactly what we talked about. So when you're looking at literal equations, you want to look at them. Think about it like taking shoes off and putting shoes on. When you put shoes on, you have to put on your socks and then put on your shoes. When you take them off, you have to take your shoes off first before you can take your socks off. You can't take your socks off first. So all literal equations are, really any equation is just doing your order of operations backward. So instead of PEMDAS, We'll, instead of starting with parentheses, we'll start with subtraction and work it backward. So when we did this back in chapter 1, we looked at it with do-undo tables. So you do exactly what PEMDAS does first. You just write what happened. So for example, A, we're solving for M. So what happened to M first in order of operations? Well, there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, there's no multiplication, but there is division. It divided by N. So we wrote that first. Then it added K. That was after division. So we added K. There was no subtraction. So when we undo it, we're going to work it backward. Instead of adding K, we're going to subtract K. So that's what we did over here in the example. So that those K's will cancel out. And we'll just bring down M over N. And then the K will move to the other side. And then instead of dividing M, we undo it by multiplying it. So we multiply by everything. So it'll cancel out on the left and leave us with N. And then it'll multiply by P and negative K. So literal equations, sometimes they'll go ahead and just leave it in parentheses. So if you'd like to do that, you can. Or they might distribute it out. So N times P is NP and n times negative k is negative kn. So either one of these answers is perfectly fine. Both of them are correct. So if we do that for example b, we're going to do our do undo table and we want to solve for h. So we want to solve for this one right here. So what's happening to h first? in order of operations. We don't have parentheses, no exponents, multiplication, yes. That is B times H. So it is multiplying by B. And division, yes, it's dividing by 2. And then we don't have any addition sign or subtraction sign. So to undo it, we're going to work it backward. Instead of dividing by 2, we're going to multiply by 2. We do it by both sides, so it'll cancel out on the fraction. 2 times a is 2a, and then it cancels out over here, so we just bring down bh. Then instead of multiplying b, we're going to divide b so that it'll cancel out over here with our h. That'll just leave us with h. And then you can't simplify letters, so we just have to leave it exactly like this, 2a over b. So h is 2a over b. And that's it. Just do the opposite. Just do your undo backward. So we'll do it for this one. If we make a do undo table, Well, what's happening to, uh, what are we starting for? A. So what's happening to A? So order of operations, parentheses. Well, what's happening in that parentheses is adding B, A plus B. 
So that took care of parentheses. There's no exponent, so we don't have that. Uh, multiplication, none of that. Technically, this is one times one over c times that parenthesis, but fractions are going to be division. So you want to look at it as division. That's not multiplying by one over c. That's dividing by c. It's multiplying by one, so I'll go ahead and add that in there. It's multiplying by one, the number on top, but it's dividing by c. So that takes care of multiplication and division. And then outside the parentheses, there was no addition and subtraction. So we're done with that. So we just do it upside down. Dividing by C, what's the undo? Well, we're going to multiply by C. So I'm going to write it again so we can see what I'm doing. So we multiply by C. That's our C. It'll just cancel that C. It does not go inside your parentheses. It just cancels it out. And it moves it to the other side. So we'll have AC. Then you've got that 1. The reason I didn't put 1 in the table at the beginning is because 1 times anything or 1 divided by anything is just itself. Like 3 times 1 is just 3. Or 3 divided by 1 is just 3. So that 1... Even if we were to divide it out, it's not going to change anything. Just like 3 divided by 1 is 3, AC divided by 1 is still just AC. So we don't have to worry about it. So then we just have that A plus B left over. So the undo for plus B is minus B. So we minus B. So A equals, and we just bring this down. We can't simplify anything with letters. Just AC minus B. Now make sure you don't change the letters. This is a capital A. It has to stay a capital A. This one's a lowercase a. It has to stay lowercase. If we switch them, then we might solve for the wrong thing. So we can't switch anything. Okay, let's look at example D. So we want to solve for N. So we're doing PEMDAS backward. Or sorry, we're going to look at it frontward, then we're going to do it backward. So for our do, we're going to do PEMDAS. For the undo, we work it backward. So parentheses. Parentheses does not just actually include parentheses. That is any grouping symbol. That can be parentheses, absolute values, square roots, anything like that is going to be included under parentheses. So in this case, this square root symbol, that is a type of grouping symbol. That's a type of parentheses. So that's first. Then we don't have any exponents. There's no multiplication. There's no division. We do have an addition sign. So it's adding k. And then we don't have any subtraction, so we're done with PEMDAS. So to undo it, we're going to work it backward. Instead of plus k, what's the opposite? Minus k. So I'm going to write this again so we can see. So we're going to minus k over. So m minus k. Again, we can't simplify letters. So just write them down. m minus k. And then equal square root of n. Now what's the undo of square root? Well, the opposite of square root is to square it. So you're just going to put it in parentheses and square the whole thing. You can't square them separately because those are connected. It's m minus k. It's not m squared minus k squared. It's a whole phrase. So your square root and square will cancel and leave you with n. And then you're just going to bring over this m minus k squared. You could write it twice and FOIL it, but we're never going to go that deep into these with literal equations. All we want you to do is to be able to get the n by itself. Once everything's away from it, we're not going to worry about the rest of that stuff.
We're not going to worry about foiling. So this is your answer. Just n equals m minus k squared. Okay, for e, we want to solve for h. So do undo to h. So order of operations. Do we have parentheses? No. Exponents. Yes, we have a squared. So we'll take care of that squared. I'll go ahead and write a squared. Do we have multiplication? Yes, that is 2 times b times h squared. All of that's being multiplied. Division? No. Addition? No. Subtraction? No. So to undo it, we're going to work it backwards. Instead of multiplying 2b, we're going to divide 2b. So divide 2b. And again, we can't simplify the letters, so we just bring that straight down. Mm, I wrote it upside down. So a over 2b equals what's left over? h squared. Then, how do we undo squared? Well, if we go back to what we did a second ago, square root, the undo for that was squared. So the undo, the opposite of squared, is going to be square root. So we're going to square root both sides. That'll cancel out the squared. So h equals this whole phrase. We don't simplify letters, none of that stuff. We can't. So we just bring it over. h equals square root of a over 2b. That's it. Just leave it alone. So anytime you're looking at letters, you want to think about your variables as placeholders for numbers. So these m, this k, this all of those are just treat them as you would a number. Just like you would if you were solving 4x plus 3 equals 8. Subtract your 3, divide your 4. That's all you're going to do. You're just working with a variable instead. But it works just like any equation. So if you can figure it out without a do-undo table, you can solve it like that. So when you're solving for a specific variable, think of the variable you're solving for as the only variable. Pretend you're looking at something like 4x plus 3 equals 8 even though it's ax plus b equals c. Just pretend like x is the only variable there. Treat everything else as numbers. So you're going to find and underline your variable that you're solving for and solve using the same process you would with any operation. All you're going to do is PEMDAS backward. So let's look at these other examples at the bottom. So example two, for A, we have 4x plus 3y equals 12. If we wanted to solve for y, we would just do PEMDAS backward. Do we have any subtraction? No. Do we have addition? Yes. So to get rid of that addition, we're going to do the opposite and subtract. So we're solving for 3y, so leave that alone, or we're solving for y. So we want to subtract the 4x to get it away from y. So 3y equals all of this right here. It doesn't matter what order you put it in. Just make sure that negative stays with 4. If you put 12 minus 4x, that is completely fine. I'm going to write it like this, and I'm going to show you why in a second. And then do we have division? No. Do we have multiplication? Yes. That is 3 times y. So to get rid of multiplication, what do we do? We divide. Um, let me write that differently. So then y equals all of that, negative 4x plus 12 over 3. Now when you're dealing with numbers, you do want to simplify those. 
anytime you have numbers, simplify them. So I'm going to split this up and put 3 on both of them. Does 4 over 3 simplify? No. So that's just negative 4 over 3x. 12 divided by 3. Well, that's just 4. So when you have numbers, make sure you simplify them. This, if you can see, what does this look like? Well, this is y equals mx plus b. So we're actually going to do this in the next chapter, but just to give you a little preview, what is your slope here? The slope is the one with the x. So negative 4 over 3, that's your slope. What's your y-intercept? The one by itself. So in the next chapter, we're going to be solving for y, and you're going to have to be able to tell us what the slope and y-intercept are. So that's just a little preview. All you're going to do is subtract your x over and divide the number in front of y. So we'll see that again. But what if there were no numbers? What if it was just all letters? So if you have ax plus by equals c, we still want to solve for y. You are just going to treat this like y is the only variable here. Everything else is a number. So you're still going to do PEMDAS backward. Do we have subtraction? No. Do we have addition? Yes. Plus AX. So to get rid of that, what's the opposite? Minus AX. Just like we minus to negative 4X. So minus your AX. So by equals, and you can put either of these first. If you want to put c minus ax, or you want to do negative ax plus c, it does not matter. Um, I'll just leave it like that. And then, do we have division? No. Do we have multiplication? Yes. That is b times y. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide. So y equals this whole phrase, c minus ax over b. Or if you put negative ax plus c, all of that's over b as well. Now you can split it up, just like we split up the top one. If you'd like to, you can do c over b and negative ax over b. You can see these both ways on a test, you can see it as one big fraction or you could see it split up. So either one of these is perfectly fine for your answer. Okay, what about if we have fractions on both sides? These are called proportions. And again, all that means is there's fraction on both sides. How do we solve that? The easiest way to solve it is probably with the butterfly method or cross multiplication, whichever way you call this. All it means is you're going to multiply a cross in a diagonal. So 20 times 2 is 40, and b times negative 5 is negative 5b. Then we want to solve for b, so how do we get rid of negative 5? Well, Go down your table. Is it subtraction? No, that's negative 5 times b. No addition, no division. It's multiplication. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So divide by negative 5. So b equals 40 divided by negative 5 is negative 8. So b equals negative 8. But what if we only had letters? If we only had letters, we would still do the same process. Do the butterfly, the cross multiplication. So A times D is AD. B times C is BC. And how do we solve for B? How do we get rid of that C right here? Well, go back to order of operations backward. This is b times c, so what's the opposite? Divide. Divide by c. Letters are not going to simplify most of the time, so you just have to leave it like this. So b equals all of that. 
A D over C. Okay, and this last one, y equals 2x plus 5. If we wanted to solve it for x, do your order of operations backward. Do we have subtraction? No. Do we have addition? Yes, that is plus 5. So what's the opposite of addition? Subtract 5. So that'll go away and it'll join the left side so y minus 5 keep going do we have division no do we have multiplication yes that is 2 times x so how do you get rid of multiplication well the opposite is division so we divide it so x equals that whole phrase y minus 5 over 2. Check your numbers. Anytime you have numbers to see if they simplify, all you're going to do is split it up to see. So y over 2 and negative 5 over 2. Well, letters don't simplify, so y over 2 is fine. 5 over 2, if you put it in your calculator, that's not going to simplify either. Either one of these answers is correct. If you want to leave it as one fraction or you want to split it up into two, both of these are correct. Okay, so what if there were no numbers at all? What if it was all letters? How would we solve for x? The exact same way. Order of operations backward. We have that plus 5. Now we have plus b. So what's the opposite of plus b? We subtract b, just like we subtracted 5. So mx equals, just bring this down, y minus b, in the exact order you see it. Then we had that 2 times x, so we divided 2. Now we have m times x, so we're going to divide m. So x equals that whole phrase. Leave it alone. Don't change it. Don't try to simplify it because letters don't simplify. Numbers do. Letters don't. And again, if you want to split it up and put m on both of them separately, so y over m minus b over m, you can split it up. Those are fine. But we do not simplify letters unless they're the same letter and these aren't. Okay, on the back or the next page. So reverse order of operations, reverse PEMDAS really should be GEMDAS because parentheses are not your only grouping symbol. Like I said on the front, you can have parentheses, you can have absolute value, you can have square roots, you can also have fractions. Fractions are a type of grouping symbol, like 2 over 5. Uh, braces are another type of grouping symbol, and brackets, are which are like square parentheses. So if we change that to gemdos, then the opposite of it would be sad meg. So we're going to work these in order of sad meg. Subtraction, addition, division, multiplication, exponents, and not parentheses, but grouping symbols in general, not just parentheses, any type of grouping symbol. So if we were to evaluate this equation, y equals 3x squared plus 5 for x equals negative 5, how would we solve that? All we need to do if x equals negative 5 we're going to take that negative 5 and plug it into x. So y equals 3 times negative 5 squared plus 5. What would we do first in order of operations in PEMDAS? Well, parentheses, those grouping symbols. So you have your parentheses here is negative 5, which is squared. So that also hits your exponent. What's negative 5 squared? Negative 5 squared, so negative 5 times negative 5, is 25. 
So that's what we did first. We did negative 5 squared, which hit our parentheses, but mainly the exponents. Then what would you do second? Multiplication is next in PEMDAS. Do we have that? Yes, 3 times 25. Well, it's 3 times 25. That is 75. So multiplication is next. Last, what would you do? Do we have division? No. Do we have addition? Yes. 75 plus 5 is 80. So that's your last step. Addition. So list the inverse of each operation from part A. In reverse order, in order of sad meg. So what's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. So instead of adding that 75 plus 5, we would subtract 5. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So instead of multiplying that 3 times 25, we would divide that 3. And what's the opposite of exponents? What's the opposite of squared? The opposite of squared is square root. So you would just square root that phrase instead of squaring it. So that's what we do to solve equations backward. So if we wanted to solve for x, instead of plugging in x, we would do it backwards. So subtract 5. So you're just going to bring it down. y minus 5. And then that's 3x squared. Divide 3. So just bring your phrase over. We got that x squared y minus 5 divided by 3. And then you can check your numbers to see if they simplify, but 5 over 3 is not going to simplify, so I'm going to leave it alone. You can always check it in your calculator. And then last, we're going to square root to get rid of the squared. That'll cancel it out. So we square root the other side as well. And again, we can't simplify the letters most of the time, so just bring it down. Square root of y minus 5 over 3. And you can always check that by plugging in that negative 5 we used earlier. Well, you plug it into x, but then you'd have to work it the other way and do it backwards. Exponent, multiplication, and addition. And see if it would work out the same. Okay, example 3. So we're going to use the reverse order of sad meg. Not looking at parentheses, but grouping symbols in general. Parentheses, x. Um, square roots, fractions, anything like that, absolute value, anything, to solve for this variable. So for a, we're going to solve for y. So we're going to do order of operations backward. We're going to do sad meg. So do we have subtraction? No. We have x plus xy. Do we have addition? Yes. We have plus x. So we want to do the opposite. What's the opposite of plus x? We're going to subtract x from the other side. So x, y equals, and we can just bring this down. We can't simplify letters for the most part. Um, do we have division? Is anything being divided by y? No. Is anything being multiplied by y? Yes, you have x times y. So how do we get rid of multiplication? Well, we divide. So you just bring it down. y equals this whole phrase. 1 over x divided by x. Now, this can be your answer. Or you can split up that fraction like we did on the front. So you would just do 1 over x and negative x over x. If you do that, these actually simplify. What's x divided by x? 
Think of it as a number. What's 4 divided by 4? 1. What's 7 divided by 7? 1. Anytime you divide something by itself, it's going to be 1. So x divided by x actually cancels out to 1. So that would be y equals 1 over x minus 1. So if you can simplify some stuff, it's recommended that you do. Okay, for B, we want to solve for P sub 2. So we have two P's over here. We have P sub 1 and P sub 2. We want to solve for 2. So work it, order of our operations backward, which is sad meg. Do we have subtraction over here with P2? No. Do we have addition? Yes. It's adding P sub 1 A. So we want to subtract P sub 1 A from the other side. So it'll cancel out. And we're just going to bring this down. So R minus P1 A. And then equals P1 2. Or P1 C. P2 C. Okay, so we did subtraction and addition. Do we have division? Is P sub 2 dividing by anything? No. Is anything multiplying over there with P sub 2? Yes. This is P sub 2 times C. So how do we get rid of multiplication? We divide by C and divide it by this whole side. So that P sub 2 equals that whole phrase. Just bring it on over. R minus P sub 1 A over C. And again, if you want to split it up, you can. R over C minus P sub 1 A over C. None of these are the same letter, so nothing's going to simplify. So that's it. Either one of these answers is fine. Leave it as one group or separate it up into two. Okay, example C, we want to solve for A. So right here. So we're going to do sad meg, which is your order of operations backwards. It's kind of covering this up. One second. That's a big old square root, by the way. This one's covering it up. Okay. So do we have subtraction? Yes but it's inside a square root, inside a grouping symbol, so we can't reach it yet. We have to take care of the grouping symbol first, but grouping symbols aren't until the end, so we're not there yet. So skip that, because it's inside a grouping symbol. Do we have addition? Yes, we have plus C. It's outside the square root, so we can go ahead and work with that. So instead of plus C, we're going to minus C to the other side. So B minus C. Okay, with your A, do you have any division? No. Do we have any multiplication? No. Do we have any exponents? No. Do we have grouping symbols? Yes. We have that grouping symbol, that square root, so how do we get rid of a square root? Talked about this on the first page. The opposite of square root is to square it. That'll cancel it out, and then you square the other side as well. The whole thing. That is not b squared minus c squared. That is b minus c squared. Just bring it down. Now that we've gotten rid of the grouping symbol, now we have to get rid of um, the x. So we just start sad meg over. Do we have subtraction? Yes, but it's subtracting a. A is what we're solving for, so we can't mess with that right this second. The x is positive. So how do we get rid of a positive x? Well, we do the opposite and we subtract it to the other side. I'm going to go up here. So negative A equals that whole phrase. B 
b minus c in parentheses squared, and then subtract your x. But then we still have this negative out front. What is that negative? Well, that's a negative 1. So that's negative 1a. So we did subtraction. We don't have any addition over here. There's no division over here. But we do have multiplication. That is negative 1 times a. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So divide out that negative 1. All that's going to do is change the sign on everything. So that negative 1 is just going to change the sign on your parenthesis to make it negative. And then it's going to change the sign on your x. So negative divided by negative is a positive x. That's a hard one. So just take it piece by piece after you get your grouping symbols. Sometimes you're going to have to start over. And that's fine. It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes we do. And if you have to start over at the beginning of Sad Meg, you can do that. Okay, last one on this example. We have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And we want to solve for y. So, Sad Meg, order of operations backward. Do we have subtraction? No. Do we have addition? Yes. We have plus x squared, that's a positive x squared. So how do we get rid of it? We subtract it. So y squared equals r squared minus x squared. Do we have division? No. Multiplication? No. Exponents? Yes. We have that squared. What's the opposite of squared? That's going to be square root. Let me not mark the two. So that'll cancel out your squared over here. So y equals. This does not cancel out. You can test it out with numbers. If I change those to numbers and I did um, 8 squared minus 7 squared. Nope, let's change it to 5 squared. I like that. So if we were to just cancel out those squares, then that leaves us with 8 minus 5, which is 3. But if you check it in the calculator, square root of 8 squared minus 5 squared is not 3. That's not how this works when there's a minus sign in your square root. They don't just cancel out. You just have to leave those there. So why? is just square root of r squared minus x squared. Do not take those squares off. That is it. r squared minus x squared. Square root of that. That's your answer. You can always check anything in the calculator by changing it back to numbers like I did. Pick any number. Even if we had done the square root of 8 squared minus 7 squared like I originally had on the paper. That's not going to be um, 1, which is what you would get if you canceled out those squares. Okay, last example. Sometimes they're going to give you formulas. A lot of times they give you formulas on your tests and stuff um, and have you solve for specific variables. So most of the time what you're going to see are actual formulas that we will use in Algebra 1 or you may use in Geometry or Algebra 2. So for this one, we have the volume of a sphere. This is the actual formula for that. And we want to know where the radius is. We want to solve for r. So that one right there. So again, we're going to do sad meg, which is your order of operations backward. So 4 over 3 pi r squared square cubed. Pi r cubed. We fix that. Okay, so do we have subtraction? No. Do we have addition? No. Do we have division? Yes. Fractions are just division. So that's dividing by 3, so we can multiply that out. 
So 3 times V is 3V. And just bring down your 4 pi r cubed because the 3 is canceled. So that was division. Do we have multiplication? Yes. That is 4 times pi times r cubed. So to get rid of multiplication, what do we do? We divide. It's multiplying by 4 and pi, so we can take both of them, 4 and pi, and divide them. So I'm going to go over here. So 3 divided by 4 does not simplify. V doesn't simplify because it's a letter. Pi doesn't simplify because it's pi. So just 3V over 4 pi. So that was multiplication. Do we have exponents? Yes. What's the opposite of r cubed? Well earlier when we had y squared, what was the opposite? A square root. That canceled out the squared. So the opposite of a cubed is a cubed root. It's just a square root with a 3 in it. And we'll do that on both sides. So we take the cubed root of 3v over 4 pi. And that's it. You just take the cubed root, write it out. No simplifying letters or anything like that. So that's it. And that takes care of it because that R is by itself. So we don't have to worry about grouping. Alright, try the practice. And good luck.